Do you hear that, folks? The time is upon us. The time for the greatest game to ever touch God's green earth. That's right, folks. It's time for the Pro Bowl. And because of that, that means this past weekend, it was the AFC Championship and the NFC Championship. And on this episode of the Trash Talk Tailgate, we're going to break them down for you. Let's do it. Riley Puddin' Peters. With me, as always, is my brother, Dr. Preston Rowe, defensive backs quality control coach at Louisiana Tech University. My friend, how are you doing? I'm good, man. We got late signing day coming up tomorrow, so I've been busy with that, but always got time to do the TTT. Heck yeah, man. Got to make that TT time to TT check it out. Just like everyone else, please check us out. Like, subscribe, comment, you know, watch us on YouTube. Listen us, listen to us on your commute, whatever, man. Bring us everywhere. Give us some love. We appreciate all the support that everybody's been giving us. Uh, and, you know, we're going to keep grinding out this content, keep coming, keep getting better. So stick with us for sure. Um, like I said, though, it was champion conference championship weekend and the first game on the docket for that is the nfc championship um that was the san francisco 49ers versus the philadelphia eagles the final score of that one is 31 to 7 eagles winning um they you know philadelphia showed out at home um you know you won this one you picked the uh, you picked the Eagles in this game. I did. Um, I did not expect Brock Purdy to go out in the first fucking drive. Neither of us did. No one did. I mean, you know, that's some of that uh, <laughs> that unexpected shit. Um, <laughs> so there's that. <laughs> you know, uh, yeah, man. But the Eagles, they in the past two games. They've outscored their opponents uh, 69 to 14. Nice. I mean, 38 to 7 last week, 31 to 7 this week. They're looking, they're looking <laughs> mighty fucking fly, eagle fly these, these past couple weeks. Dude, they've been hitting on all cylinders, and it's just been awesome to watch. Like, we talked about it. Over the last few weeks, they've probably you can make the case that they've got the best roster top to bottom. Just the amount of quality depth they have, especially up front, in the offensive and defensive lines. I mean, they just they just send wave after wave after you, and it's it's really it's really fun to watch. You know, they they've got a great scheme. You know, with Jalen Hurts, they've got receivers with AJ Brown, Devontae Smith. They've got Dallas Goddard, who's a very, very good tight end for them. Miles Sanders running the read option. It's, you know, it's it's just awesome. And then, obviously, you know, the offensive line, led by arguably one of the best centers in all of football, Jason Kelsey, Lane Johnson at right tackle. It's just, they're just, they're I'm just sorry. a lot of fun. I'm sorry. Did you say Big Riley's Bub of the Week, Philadelphia right tackle, Lane Johnson. I did. Listen, man. It's almost like I set you up for that. It's almost like you did. 
It's almost mm-hmm. like sometimes layups come, and other times, well, I show you pictures. True. <laughs> and unlike LeBron James getting fouled by Jason Tatum, we hit our layups. Yeah, man. So let's talk about Lane Johnson. I mean, torn abductor going against Nick Bosa, zero sacks, zero quarterback hits. I mean, that's that's impressive. Nick um, Bosa had one tackle on the game. Yeah. Like on Jalen Hurt. It was it was insane. Like he took him completely out of the game. On a torn fucking abductor, he re injured his groin against the Giants. <sighs> yeah. And uh, Philadelphia as a whole had 44 rushes for 148 yards and four touchdowns, three different people scoring those touchdowns. I mean, those are big numbers. Uh, The whole time against, like we said, defensive player of the year, Nick Bosa. And I've got some, some hashtag copious film. (laughs) <laughs> to back up Mr. Lane Johnson. So, like we said, he's the right tackle. And he's right here. All right. <laughs> so, this play, we're going to watch him get just amazing outside leverage against Nick Bosa. I mean, in a play like this, when it's <clears throat> someone like that, I mean, someone very explosive off the edge, what you have to do is take away that edge. And in this case, I mean, the rest of the offensive line, the guard, does a good job of not really getting blown back. He holds pretty strong here. So when Nick Bosa, he can't go to the outside. He can't do this. It's blocked off. Lane Johnson has kept him from this. He has to go back inside. The problem he is. He to rip him inside. Yeah, he, he, has, to, he, he, he has no other choice. He's going to rip him to the inside, but when he goes there, the rest of the offensive line, it's, he's just in, in a bubble. And, and Riley, Riley, go back. Yep. I just want to point something out to you from a coach's perspective. What, look, look at the Eagles' protection scheme. They go scat protection. And what scat protection means is it's just five offensive linemen, you, and it's five wide receivers, five eligible receivers split out. You don't have anyone like at an H back. You don't have a running back in there to help protect. Like it's just five offensive linemen, and that is your protection. And they they don't even try to to help on Nick Bosa. It's just one on one Lane Johnson, Nick Bosa. You see what I'm saying? Oh yeah. I mean, they they obviously trust Lane Johnson, and there is some validity to this trust. I mean, he just. And it's that's five star offensive like that's a five star pass blocking right there, just keeping the leverage, keeping the outside leverage, not letting them get around, forcing them back to the inside, and then also the rest of the offensive line for holding their shit. So when he gets forced to the inside, he's just stuck in the bubble. Um. So that's, I mean, great play. No reason. All right. So the next play we have right here, once again, this is a fourth and three. It's going to be Lane Johnson versus Joey Bosa on this one as well. Nick Bosa. Sorry, Nick Bosa. Mm -hmm. All right. So this one, so obviously his first thought is this right here. In this case, the 49ers actually run a stunt here. Give a little, little X stunt. Mm-hmm. And I mean, they read oh, dude, it perfect. Look at how they pick that up, though. I mean, perfect. It's like, it, I mean, it just doesn't even matter. Because on a stunt, as a defensive, as a defensive schemer and as a defensive coach, what you want on a stunt like this is you want the uh, the inside defensive lineman. You know, you want him to get so far upfield so fast that both linemen have to commit to to securing the edge. And then you've got the edge rusher initially coming, looping back inside to hopefully get a free rush right up the middle. But, dude, 
watch watch his, watch his first step. Watch Lane Johnson's first step. I mean, <laughs> this is all this space right here. So to to properly sell this at this point in time, the inside defensive lineman right here would have to be two yards off the ball already. Yes. Just because of how how they set up this protection. Also, once again, we're in scat. We are. Fourth and three. Fourth and three, this get they go scat. <laughs> I mean, it's, that's it's balls. Wild. That's fucking balls. But I mean, they read dude, it perfect. Look, but dude, look at fifty six. Like, w- yeah. watch how they combo him initially, and then he just reads. He sees the stunt, and he just gets right off. Right there. I mean, he he's fucking looking Nick in the eyes. <laughs> I mean, he's like, oh, man, don't you look good, Bubba. Come here. Come here. And then this is the Devontae Smith controversy catch. Look at all the – he had so much the, – the, the fucking pocket was so clean. Jalen, Devontae Smith could walk through this route and fucking – I think this is the one that everybody was bitching and moaning about. Yeah, it wasn't that was. a catch. But I mean, dude, it's just but but that the reason the that play happens is because of, of the offensive line. Yeah, I mean, and then this right here, this is this is art. This is beauty. This is art. What we're gonna see is two double teams. We're going to have Lane Johnson, right tackle, and the right guard. They're going to double team this guy that's in front of them. Mm-hmm. Um, please check out the YouTube edition so you can see what we're talking about. If you're just listening to no video, you're about to get real confused. <laughs> and then on the other side, we're going to have uh, hashtag world's greatest center, Jason Kelsey. And the left guard, they're going to have a double team right here on this guy as well. And, I mean, they're on the six and a half yard line, about to score a touchdown. They're going in. And they're going to use these two double teams to create a wall. Let's just, they create a wall. Dude, look at the push up front. I mean, they're fucking two yards downfield. A second into the play, uh, they create they created a wall. The center, Jason Kelsey, and the uh, right guard have made a little door, and I mean, all the running back has to do is walk in. But dude, so go back, Riley. Oh, oh yeah, oh, I know you. Wanna. I know you will. Because you're going to talk about the celebration in a minute, but I just I so no. But I want to also want to talk about wrote, like in this run through. I want to talk about the uh, the so Lane Johnson does a great job here, but what he the thing that he really does is help this uh, right guard sell this double team right here. Look how look how like crazy of a hip like rotation this guard has. I mean, he goes from squared up to this dude. To like them facing the sideline. Yeah, and that's what I want to talk about. So just, just run it. Real so quick. they make contact here. So he's squared up right here, and we'll watch how he just keeps his feet driving, just keeps his feet moving. I mean, Lane Johnson is is giving him but giving dude, this dude to push, and he is just flipping them hips. Well, we'll watch this. So, dude, it's crazy because he he actually combos up to the backer without actually like getting off the D line. And that's how much push and drive off the ball they have. So so run it back real quick. Cause I, I wanna I know I know I just want to talk about this for a second. So watch him just initially drive. Run it back. Pause it right when he gets to the hole. Right when the back gets to the hole. 
that. So just watch this. So so he starts to flip his hips and look. So it, typically, what you want to do on a double team like this is you want to have is you want to um, be able to to secure the D tackle and then have one of them work up to the linebacker and combo off of him. But dude, look like so you know uh, the right guard. He's able to flip his hips and seal off not only the D tackle, we call that a seal. Like you want to seal, or in other words, like you said, wall him off. But he's able to do it to both the D tackle and the linebacker just because of how far they've driven him off the ball. See what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. And I mean, we look like the linebacker all of a sudden, he's washed, dude. He's caught up in the seal. He can't get back over the top. I mean, they, they've got. Four guys here. I yeah, mean, but I mean, they're 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 all sealed off. They're that's what I'm saying. Literally, I mean, this one block because of how fast it was, because of this one block, these two dudes also got taken out of the play. Yes, they did. Because of how how far back that fucking D lineman <laughs> got blown back, I mean, it literally <laughs> kept three people, beside just that dude, from even being able to touch the play. And it's a walk-in. It's a walk-in, and it's a little shimmy. I got a better <laughs> of that shimmy. Everybody deserves a little bit more of that Jason Kelsey's shimmy. Yes. <laughs> Dude, how can you not love Jason Kelsey? <laughs> oh, my God. That's just beautiful. That, that's, that's art right there. That's fucking art, truly. Yeah, so that's fucking... I mean, and then so, I mean, a big thing that we talk about, especially in the, that picture that we show, is that he's playing against against Nick Bosa. I mean, a legit, I mean, legit, legit ed, edge rush threat. I mean, defense player of the year. You argue he's the best one in the league right now. And we're, let's, let's watch uh, Lane Johnson shut him the fuck down for a few plays here. <laughs> right here at the top. Bam. And where are you going? What are you doing? What are you doing? Where are you going? Yo, his first step, man, it's awesome. (laughs) It's so fucking powerful. It's what you thought you were. It's what I it's what I (laughs) wanna be. It's exactly, yeah, dude. It's everything I thought it was. Look at this first step. Boop. And then I mean he's just set up, square up, he's like, hit me, boy. Come on, come on, come on. You want some? But dude, Riley, so so go back. Look at his technique. Like, yes, the first step, any coach will tell you, any coach worth his salt will tell you, the most important thing to do on any play in football is always your first step. No matter what position, it's always your first step. So go back. Mm-hmm. But, dude, look look at how after his initial first step, look at how he's set up. Like, he's, I'm gonna... he's not, like, completely t- turned. He's yeah. square. He's so square. even if Nick Bosa tries to swim back inside, he's right there to get him. Yeah, he's like, ready. He's, like, dude, like he's he's not like have his flips completely turned so he's so he can get beat inside. He's just he's just set up, dude. He's got a great base. He's his uh his shoulders are square. Everything about that is just perfect technique and, then and execution. If you watch from here and you sync this little scene up, this little clip up right here to the song Can't Touch This, you'll see some similarities. Mm-hmm. Watch this. Can't touch this. Do 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 do. Can't touch this. I mean, he dances with him, man. <laughs> he fucking look at. I mean, look at the way he keeps him on him the whole time. I mean, they're going this way. And, oh, now we're going this way. Oh, 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 and 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 yeah. And he doesn't hold. No, not not at all. Not the whole fucking time. It's crazy. Uh okay. Sorry, I got another one. Okay. okay. What you got for me, Riley? So this one's on the goal line. I mean. Yeah, they're backed up. Backed up. We got this bunch formation. So Nick Bosa's bumped out a little bit extra. Once again, look at where I'm stopping. Dude, this is actually like a perfect stop. The ball just is getting hiked. Look at everyone on the fucking field and look at fucking Lane Johnson. (laughs) Dude, look at this. Fucking look at this. Jason Kelsey snaps the ball and he's not even ready. Like he's. I mean, the ball is moving. You can see the ball is moving. So this isn't a false start. No. 
So it's like, look at this. <laughs> Everyone, literally the entire field. Let me put us out of full screen so I hit the thing too much. Uh, but literally the entire field, man. That is. That's beautiful. And, and then, as an edge rusher, if the right tackle, if, if any of the tackles has that quick of a get-off, you've got no chance. So watch the whole thing. I mean, he just stalled. Look how deep he did. Yeah. I mean, look, look how deep he is. I mean, he almost puts him out the back of the end zone. <laughs> it's like pretty legit close. Uh, unfortunately, kind of a bust of a play on the end of that, but great pass blocking. Yeah, Jalen Hurts didn't have the best game. but So then we get another one here. Bam. My boy Bosa, he's bumped out now by this fucking nickel. We got a nickel threat. So And Riley, you know what that means? You know what that means when they're, when they're like wide, in a wide stance like that? I mean, they're most likely looking to come. Dude, they're they're coming. They're 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 just saying, "Fuck the run fit. We're coming after Jalen Hurts." And it's I mean it's first and fifteen. They're backed up. This typically tends to be a pass scenario, and they they're sending the they they're at least signaling that they're going to send the dogs. They pull them out. They don't actually, but they read it perfect. And I mean, once again, look look at okay. Offensive line, Lane Johnson. <laughs> I mean, they're on a string, and he and is. Look how he squared up. He is prepared. And once again, just dances with him, man. Uh, and I've got, I've still got more. So I'm gonna. This one isn't um him, pass blocking against. It's just right here, and it'd be inconvenient as shit to go about this any other way. But this is a quick hitter. Okay, so we got him right here. Yeah, yeah. Look at that. Watch him catch his dude on the comeback. Boom. 15-yard run. I mean, literally saves this play from the backside. Because they're, they're on a double team here. And yep. So, the last double team that we talked about, we talk about comboing the double team to the linebacker. Mm -hmm. And in this case, because of the way the, the way the linebackers kind of sit and the way that the play pans out, that's not the most important need. Instead of combat, comboing and getting the guard to a linebacker, uh, this nickel blitzes or, like, goes to hit the hole fast. So, the most important threat is Lane Johnson, or is that guy. And Lane Johnson reads that, passes him, passes the defensive lineman to the guard, and then he combos into that. Because, look, dude, the guard has that. him sealed, like we talked about. Yeah, the, the guard, guard has him sealed, so he just it's just a pass, and then he picks up the backside, which is, I mean, beautiful. That's, that's just textbook, man. Like, As a coach, you can't ask for anything more than that. I mean that's going it's even that's even going above and beyond. It is. Them just comboing to a backer here and trying to get out. I mean, if this dude makes the play, they're like, okay, cool, they shot us in the foot. Lane Johnson reading that, passing, and then picking it up. Also, this dude too, he gets five six here as well. I mean he just he he just seals them. And, and look, the, I mean, because because of that initial seal, fifty six has to go back inside and he's essentially washed out of the play yep like he's got to go over the top at that point so this is the play before it let's see right, right here bam this is just ah uh, such a good play it's so beautiful um okay and then i have one more him one uh, more this might be your longest bub ever oh it could be i told you <laughs> we had I had copious Lane Johnson bub film. <laughs> so we are nothing one. if not copious with the TTT. It's a fact. And once again, just squares up, dances with him. Hold, gets him there. I mean, 
none of these are crazy highlights. He's not pancaking them. But that's defensive player of the year. Nick like the, Bosa. Yeah. Like, dude, he, he's got no chance. I mean, he's just still. At the end of that play, he's still. Dude, he stood up. That is stalwarting. Yeah, fucking Lane Johnson, man. He is an absolute unit. There is no doubt about that. And, you know, all the love for him. That's it's real bub work right there. Real bub work. Yeah, um, and, yeah, that was that was awesome, Riley. That, that film, that whole just film compilation. I appreciate it, man. That was beautiful. And... You know, we can talk all we want about the Eagles' offensive line because they absolutely dominated. But, I mean, let's be real, man. When Brock Purdy got hurt on the first drive, the game was essentially kind of over at that point. Like, we kind of knew, okay, they've got really no chance. Because, dude, they had to bring in Josh Johnson, their four-string quarterback. Josh Johnson wasn't even on the roster until Jimmy Garoppolo went down earlier in the season because they went through Trey Lance was the starter. He got hurt week one. Jimmy Garoppolo was the backup. He gets hurt later in the season. And then Brock Purdy comes in, you know, he, he, he hasn't lost a game as a starter and he's playing incredibly hot going into these, uh, going into the playoffs. And then he gets his elbow busted by Hassan Reddick. And so they literally were on their four string quarterback. And then Josh Johnson, he gets hurt because he's got a concussion. Brock Purdy has to come back into the game, but he can't throw the ball. And so they do, they were literally playing with both hands tied behind their back. And <laughs> I, I, they were think, playing I with think, the entire backpack when Christian McCaffrey's back. I mean, dude, Christian McCaffrey, what were his stats, Riley? Terrible. But instead, I've got film for you. Okay. Fuck his stats. <laughs> Fuck his stats. Just watch the film. Fuck his I mean, stats. I mean, dude, like, Just you know, watch I, the film. Christian McCaffrey, like, he kind of knew, okay, you know, our quarterback, he's out. He can't really throw the ball. We're still in this game, dude. It's only 7 nothing. You know, we've... We've got to be able to. I got to. Like, in his mind, he's I gotta saying, team okay, I got to try to put the team on my back. Yep. So this is the third and 20. This is directly after the injury. He goes, almost puts the team all the way on his fucking back, dude. You can't ask for more than that in that situation. No, you can't. No. Him busting 16 on the fucking third, third and 20. Yeah. Okay. So is this a have, touchdown? So this is just the drive. Okay. This is the drive. I'm gonna, I got. I mean, I think this whole drive kind of just shows him playing his fucking heart out. We're gonna cap it with that gutsy touchdown. Just look at him. Just drive his feet and hold on to the ball because he knows he can't turn the ball over. Look at this, dude! Look at the blocking on that screen. <clears throat> that was good blocking on that screen. Um, good blocking on that screen. We just we, let's just scheme. just a little just a little under route. Just, just give him arrow. fucking everything. Yeah. And then dude, he hurdles a defender. And then breaks two tackles and scores a touchdown. I mean, you really just. He's really just. Ah. Man, if he isn't just. Ugh. Yeah, no. You could argue that he should 100% be in the MVP conversation. Because since he got. I think he will be next year. I, I think he will be too. I mean, that's. So, I mean, that's really, that's the Chris McCaffrey film for you. Um, but man put team on back for he sure. He did. And I just, again, you know, Christian McCaffrey, at the end of the day, man, you know, it, 
in this league in the NFL, you can't win games if you're on your four string quarterback. The fact that the 49ers even got to the NFC championship game on their third string quarterback is a huge testament to Kyle Shanahan and just his brilliant coaching. And I'm not the biggest Kyle Shanahan fan, but I was literally about to be his what? (laughs) Yeah. Go what? Like, if you know me, you know, I'm not the biggest Kyle Shanahan fan, but I mean, I, I've got to give credit when where credit's due. And again, dude, like the Niners defense, they fought so hard. They, they tried to keep them in the game. But when your offense can't throw the ball even a little bit, you're not going to win that game. It's and hard. Just, the Niners, they they were playing with both hands tied behind their back. And it's, it's really unfortunate because I still think the Eagles would have won, but it would have been a much better game. Because Brock Birdie, he was four for four on that first drive until he got hurt. Um, and then, you know, I again, I also think, I also think that it can't be. We we've got to give a shout out to the Eagles' defensive end Hassan Reddick because yeah. he had two sacks and hurt the fumble. quarterback. He also he also was the, he also <laughs> busted uh, Brock. He also hurty elbow. dirty Purdy's elbow. He did. He left Dirty was, Purdy Hurdy. I mean, dude, Hassan Reddick, that entire Eagles D line, you know, it they're they're just they're on another level right now. And Hassan Reddick, he had two sacks and a forced fumble and he knocked the quarterback out of the game. So, you know, they one hundred percent deserve to be in the Super Bowl. And honestly, man, I I think they should be favored right now. Um but yeah, that was that was kind of the NFC Championship game. Do you have anything else to add? Nah, man, that's that was it was it should have been a good game. It should have been. It should have been. It does it does suck that it wasn't. Um, but you know what? Shit happens, and they gotta keep rolling with it. But congratulations, to the Eagles. I mean, definitely looking great coming into the Super Bowl. You know, sixty nine to fourteen outscoring other people, that's pretty good. Riley, how upset are you gonna be if they win the Super Bowl? Uh I don't know. I'm not gonna be I'm not gonna be crazy upset. I mean you know, listen. Fuck 'em. The only people I care about are their offensive line. Um, that is just a fact. I I'm here for for that that O line man, Jason Kelsey, Lane Johnson, uh, Jordan Mailata. They're they're excellent dudes. Made an excellent Christmas album. Um, Top tier bubs. Uh, so love that offensive line. Everything else about the Eagles can just. Fly the fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, man. So for the suck, AFC. Man. Yeah, it must, it must suck to have three NFC East playoff playoff teams this year. And you're still sad. That must really I'm suck. still sad. <laughs> I am still sad about it. Oh, but anyway. So, uh, yeah. You know, this second game, though, as you all know, this was everything we thought it was going to be and more. We knew this was going to be a very close game, but the Kansas City Chiefs at home pull out the last second win, 23-20 to 20 over Joe Burrow and the Cincinnati Bengals. And, oh, man, just where, where to start, man. I know a lot of people are going to say, uh, you know, the, the refs had questionable calls. They literally gave Kansas City a fifth down when the Bengals had had stopped them. They they made them redo a third down that that the Bengals had stopped Kansas City on in the fourth quarter. And you know the Chiefs didn't score on that drive because the Bengals they were able to to stop them again. Um, but you know the the questionable holding call on the last play of the game, obviously the fucking Joseph Asai shoving Patrick Mahomes when he's already out of bounds. I mean, as a D lineman, I get it. But at the same time, that's Patrick Mahomes and they're gonna call that every single time. You cannot yeah, you in that situation, you've got to know better. 
And typically, I I try to defend defensive players running full speed because they can't stop their momentum. But if he if he didn't shove him, he would have just avoided. Him. But like you can't put your hands out and shove him you when can't. he's already when he's already clearly out of bounds. When he's both feet in the white. Yeah, it's just I mean, I'm gonna call it every single time, and you know, and, and that didn't cost him the game either because Riley at the end of the day. The Bengals, they turned the ball over twice. And the Chiefs, they only had one turnover. And yeah. Joe Burrow, he was 26 of 41 for 270 yards. You know, he had a touchdown pass. It was a beautiful touchdown pass to T. Higgins in double coverage where T just high pointed the ball, you know. But uh, uh, Joe Burrow was also sacked five times. He was sacked five times for 32 yards. Um, T. Higgins, he had six catches, 83 yards, and a touchdown. Jamar Chase had six catches for 75 yards. Honestly, dude, the Bengals or the the Chiefs, the Chiefs did a great job of of really shutting down Jamar Chase. He couldn't really get loose for those explosive plays that were so accustomed to him making. Hayden Hurst had four catches for 37 yards. He also dropped a touchdown pass. Like, I'm sorry, man. You've got to catch that. Like, you've mm. got to catch that. That would have that would have made it seven to six Cincinnati. Um in the first half, but you know, Patrick Mahomes playing on basically one leg with a bum ankle, 29 of 43, 326 yards, two touchdowns, but he didn't have any interceptions. He had that one really bad fumble, which kind of gave the Bengals life late in the game. Uh, how about Marquez Valdez Scantley, man? Stick catches 116 oh yards and a God. touchdown. Yeah, dude. That touchdown pass that Patrick Mahomes threw, that is one of the greatest just throws I've ever seen. Because that window was non-existent. <laughs> but Patrick Mahomes just, he just fitted in there somehow on one leg. I was about to say, hobbled Mahomes too. Yeah, I mean. I mean, listen, man, it, I told you storylines, dude. Hobbled Mahomes and his homies. Balled the fuck out together. They did. They they one hundred percent did. And it's 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 just crazy. Um, you know, Travis Kelsey, he, you know, he's gonna do what he does. You know, he had he had seven uh catches for seventy eight yards. You know, he, he also had a touchdown reception. Isaiah Pacheco out of the backfield, they typically use mm. uh they typically use, you know, McKinnon out of the backfield. But Isaiah Pacheco had five catches, 59 yards. He got loose on some of them that really kind of broke the camel's back for the Bengals' D. And, I mean, just, dude, how about Chris? I mean, he could have easily been a bub of the week, too. He had four tackles, three tackles for loss, and two sacks. And he he kind of basically took the game over at one point. And, I mean, you know, he, listen, was, he was awesome. You're well, saying he could be a bub. Well, guess what? I'm going to make him one. <laughs> oh, he is? Okay. okay. Well, not, no, if we're going to put it like that, we're going to put it like that. Now, I actually did go through and pull his – Uh, I pulled his, some of his footage. I don't have nearly as many plays as I did for Lane Johnson. But uh, okay. it's kind of harder for a defensive lineman. It's not as exciting. Dude, let's be real. You're gay for Lane Johnson. You also just said, let's be gay. You definitely <laughs> did just say, let's be gay. Okay, I mean, we're you, gonna get real gay we're here. For Lane Johnson on this show. We All right, listen, I'm, I'm, you know, Jason Kelsey, Lane Johnson, and Jordan Mailata, man. He can sing. You should hear his voice. Listen to the Christmas, dude. Album. dude okay, that's, that's an awesome Christmas album. So but we got, we got our boy Chris Johnson right that, here. Yeah. Before you show that, just let me, just let me give you a little bit more copious notes, please. You know, Frank Clark, he had 14. He, he's now third all time in playoff sacks in the NFL history with 14.5, you know, he passed Terrell Suggs uh, with his sack this past weekend, you know, and, and then honestly, dude, like the story of the game, it, it came down to turnovers and the Bengals couldn't run the ball. They yeah. had 17 carries for 71 yards. That D line of the chiefs just shut them down. And Joe Burrow, believe it or not, was their leading rusher. He had four carries for 30 yards. And, you know, whenever you play a game of this magnitude, you've got to be able to run the ball at least a little. And the 
the Bengals couldn't do it. And dude, they, they had their chances. They just they just fell a little bit short. And you know, really, it was it was the turnovers, and um, and just that dumb boneheaded penalty that that really kind of sealed their fate. And it was a great game, though. You know, it was it was a hundred percent everything we thought it was going to be and you know the chiefs the chiefs deserved to win you know yeah. they had a they had patrick mahomes on one leg and they were able to tough it out and gut it out and they did what Dabo sweeney always says they brought their own guts and they were able to they, pull out a win they fucking brought their own guts baby Woo! Oh my God, shut the fuck up <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, man. Oh God, it's it was man. It was a good one. It was a good one. Um, Patrick Mahomes really brought the fucking guts. He did. Man. Okay. Well, uh, let's let's, let's, let's see do some, some little Chris Jones, Riley. You ready for some Chris Jones? Let's really bring some bub action to this. <laughs> All right. So we got a first play. This is his first sack. Yes. He's right here. In the top, and let me just watch how gently he puts him down right here. <laughs> he did not he forget just, the hot chocolate. He did not forget the fucking hot chocolate, man. <laughs> I mean, he said, "You're my sweet baby now. You're my sweet baby." Yeah. Let's watch this again. A little bit too far back, and here we go. Boom. I mean, just fuck you, seventy four. What are you in my way for? What are you in my yeah. way for? Joe Burrow, I'm here. Ding, ding. I like to sit him on the ground, happy. I gave him his blanket. <laughs> 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 All right, and then we're going to go a little bit later into the game here. I'm going to go about right here. So it's just a Joe Burrow whiff, but watch, yeah, watch Chris Johnson, Chris Jones, God, dude. The CTE is real today. Dude. CTE is real, man. I <laughs> a long weekend, everybody. Leave me alone. Chris Jones, bam, he's right here. What he's gonna do is take this double team. He's gonna get double team. And he's gonna push him all the way back into Joe Burrow. Oh, dude, look at that swim. I mean. This isn't this is one of those like this is QB pressure, which I guess is a stat that they keep now, which is awesome. But this isn't one of the big stats that everyone always looks at. But this is I mean, this is a game changer. Um of like just of a stack. I mean, I mean, especially even this play, it's not super big, but there's only eight seconds left. It's second down. Like this disruption, man, this caused some havoc. I mean they wasted half the time they had left just to throw that BS pass because Chris Johnson got all the way up in his grill, licking lips. Dude, run, run it back, run it back. I'm gonna, gonna drop some knowledge on you people over there. Yep. Okay, so Riley, you know Chris Johnson, he's lined up in a. Or, God, dude. Yes. Now I've got. Yes. Now I've got. It's contagious. Oh, dude, it is. Chris Jones, he's lined up in a true three technique, and so what that means is he is um he's outside shade of the guard and essentially what you want to do like what a three technique like as an offensive line you want to always try to double the three technique because what the three technique is going to try to do he's going to try to get penetration and try to just clog it up but at the same time if you're a great three technique like chris jones is you want to be able to be quick enough to split it and still get pressure on the quarterback does that make sense Absolutely. So, this is my Riley, home. So he's, he's lined up here. All right, we got him so right look. here. He's on this outside shoulder right here, folks. Watch this. Be ready for this. So, he he's plays a little bit. Shade. He plays he's so look, outside shade, plays to the inside. So, look, he initially, so look, he, he, he's able, to, he's already in the gap. He's already done his job. But watch this now. Watch him get inside leverage of the center because that's the center. Mm. Watch him just bulldoze his way inside and still get pressure on Joe Burrow, dude. That's 
that's from the A gap. Like he's like he 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 changes an entire, he moves an entire gap. Like you know what I mean? Oh yeah. So, you know that that's just that's just awesome right there. That's that's one hundred percent awesome. All right, so now we have him. He's back in the one technique. Yes, he is. Oh no, never mind. Wait. He's on the outside. No, 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 dude, dude. He's, Yikes. He's this. Sorry. This is when they had. Him. I didn't. Yep, yep. This is when they had him play the outside. Hey, listen, man. Sometimes guys get moved to places where they're not usually, and it throws people off. That's what the Chris point Jones, is. He's a true three. And yeah, he is you know, a true the, three. It should be noted the Bengals had three offensive line starters who were out and who were injured. They and, did. You know they they gave up five sacks, like we said, and you know, but give credit to the Chiefs and defensive coordinator Steve Spagnuolo because. They got Chris Jones on favorable matchups, you know, whether it was at the three, the one, you know, a five. Yeah, he's fucking know. edge rushing here. He's he's edge rushing right here. And, I mean, does a great dude, job. I mean, it's, again, it's fucking scat protection. And with that offensive line, you can't go scat protection. So, listen, in this situation. I want to show – this is, this is something, I think, the difference between Lane Johnson and then the guy that's playing right tackle here for the Bengals. Look at, we you know, we showed the one play with Lane Johnson earlier where the entire offensive line and Lane Johnson was a step behind and yes. facing the guy he was going to be blocking. Yes. Now, look at this. This dude, he's they're all in the same around. line. He is, <laughs> he is completely <laughs> turned around. And that is not good. No. Chris Jones get, just gets to eat Joe Burrow again. Okay, run it back, run it back. I oh, just yeah. want to take a look at his first step. I just want to look at his first step. They've got Chris Jones on the edge. Okay, run it back, Riley. Just. It's not, it's not enough. It's not enough, especially against. He was just Chris too Jones. wide. Well, he was just too wide out. Like, honestly, like, well, I'm sorry. Jones is too wide out for the steps that this right tackle just took. Like, I mean, I'm so glad we did Lane Johnson earlier because it kind of does make this breakdown. If you watched it and you're still watching, I hope you can go back and at least think about this a little bit. Like, every time Lane Johnson was going against Nick Bosa on this, like, kind of wide technique, his first steps put him two yards behind the other, like, the rest of his all O-line compatriots. Mm -hmm. And he would be two steps behind them and squared up to allow the space to get into the blocking position he needs. This dude does mm-hmm. not do that. No. His steps are pretty shallow. I mean, listen, he's still in an NFL right tackle. I mean, they're, they're good. He's still square. They're just a little shallow. And against someone as good as Chris John, uh, Chris Jones, you're just – it's you're going to get beat every time. But, dude, Riley, go back because I just noticed something too. Watch how his feet stop. Oh, no, not feet stopping. Dude, watch his feet stop. Oh. See that? Oh. Like, as soon as he makes contact, his feet stop. And Chris I mean, Jones just. I mean, he lets. Just, he fucking, like. Oh. Chris Chris Jones, like, moves him. Yeah. Look at that. Look at this. Oh, dude. Like, no, at a right tackle, your feet can never stop. You've always got to have your feet. Yeah, no, that's bad. Oh, dude, and and that's what gets him, man. If he just yep. keeps his feet moving, Chris Jones doesn't get into the backfield for the sack that quickly. Yeah. Oh, that's that's just painful right there, dude. That's just not good football. It's not. I mean, that's yeah. But yeah, that's, that's what I had for Chris Jones as my bub. Um, I mean, those are some big plays. This is some powerful shit. It was, man, and it just oh, I mean you. you Shout out to Chris Jones though he he took the game over but God dude that right tackle that was that was not that was not good technique at all no oh. Riley we've got one more thing yeah it would not be the TTT without everyone's favorite segment bruh Burr. and this week we're gonna talk a little bulletin board material. Riley, do you have it? We're going to go live to the footage. So, 
for those for those who do not know, this is the mayor of Cincinnati. Bruh. Aftab Hurlbut. I think that's how you say it. I don't know him. You know, he's. I think it's kind of sad that this is like probably the thing that he's going to be most notable for, like throughout his entire political career, which is not good. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm not wrong, but uh, you know, so that's just a few days before the game. We, we should is, just we is, should just let the people. We should just give it to the people. You can't set this up. There's nothing to be said besides what he says. Th- this is ridiculous. Just play it. Good afternoon, Cincinnati. I have a proclamation from the desk of the mayor. Be it proclaimed, whereas the Cincinnati Bengals are headed to Burrowhead Stadium for their second God. consecutive AFC championship game. Whereas at last year's game, the Bengals scored more points than the Chiefs, resulting in a Bengals victory and a Chiefs loss. Whereas Joseph Lee Burrow, who's 3-0 and against Mahomes, has been asked by officials to take a paternity test to confirm <laughs> whether or not he's his father. Whereas all season long, Cincinnati has been on a path of destiny, fighting it out to overcome anyone who stands between them and a Super Bowl win. And whereas Kansas City is named after its neighboring state, which is, you know, just kind of weird. Now, therefore, I, after your <laughs> mayor of the city of Cincinnati, do hereby proclaim January 29th, 2023, as they got to play us day in Cincinnati. Thank you. I... Oh man. Oh. It's it's so honestly, you know, as much as that is a bro, that's also kind of a toxic fan base. It is, but I, I mean, dude, like it's fuck. I, I honestly, mean, I'm going to call it both and we're going to run both intros and keep talking. <laughs> yeah! Yeah! These officials really need to get off the field. <laughs> Somebody threw something at him from the stands. Well, let me tell you what I did. The weekend after the Iron Bowl, I went to Auburn, Alabama, because I live 30 miles away, and I poisoned the two tumor trees. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm good with that. I, dude, what the fuck, man? Yeah. I don't, dude, like, it's one thing if you're Mike Hilton, because Mike Hilton was caught on NFL films after they beat Buffalo uh, in the divisional round, saying, we'll see y'all in Burrowhead. That's bulletin board material enough for the Chiefs. And for those of you saying bulletin board material isn't a real thing, it 100% is a real thing. It, like, yeah. any little slight that these professional athletes have like or they perceive as a slight it's going to motivate them even more like because they're they're just wired different same thing with coaching they're just wired differently you have to be crazy to do this for a living you have to be a little bit insane and i'm fully admit it i'm a little bit insane to do this for a living yes he is my point is any little perceived perceived slight and this isn't even a perceived slight. This is just, we're just going to fucking is just shit a on slight. <laughs> yeah, like it's, dude, we're just going to fucking shit on Arrowhead Stadium, Patrick Mahomes. Dude, the mayor of the mayor of Cincinnati literally said Joe Burrow has to take a paternity test to see if he's Patrick Mahomes' father. Patrick Mahomes is the best player in the league. And you're going to disrespect him like that? And I mean, you know, after the game, I mean, dude, they're already motivated because the Bengals are three and zero against uh, the Chiefs. Joe Burrow is three and zero against Patrick Mahomes, but none of that shit. Matters. I appreciate that. How about this? This is the AFC beautiful- Championship game. You cannot give them any extra motivation. And the mayor of Cincinnati, man, you you fucking. As funny as it was, I knew it was going to come back to bite them in the ass because. You're talking shit about Patrick Mahomes. You're talking shit about maybe the greatest tight end in NFL history in Travis Kelsey. 
you're talking shit about one of the best coaches in the league in Andy Reid. Yeah. And they're at home. You don't think they're going to be fucking pissed off and ready to play this game? And you, you don't know think that I'm your offensive off? line. What? No, you're good. Keep going. And the Bengals, and like you know that the Bengals' offensive line is depleted. They've had three starters out with various injuries. And I just, I just cannot wrap my mind around why the mayor of Cincinnati, of all people, I get it. You want to support your team, you know, just be like, hey, you know, we're really excited to go into Arrowhead Stadium. And we're just going to, we're just happy to be there. You know, you, you've just got to play it coy. You can't give them any extra motivation. And the fact that Patrick Mahomes, Travis Kelsey, fucking Chris Jones, they all mentioned in the post-game interviews, we were motivated by Burrowhead and we were motivated by fucking Aftab Puraval, whatever the fuck his name is. Like, it's real. Bullet to more material is real. You know what's also, also what's really real? funny? What? Is that Travis Kelsey? I mean, that's a Cincinnati boy. He is. Like, <laughs> like that dude's essentially talking shit on a hometown kid. Yeah. I didn't even think about that, but you're right. Yeah, they're, dude. They're from Ohio. I mean, they played at Cincinnati. They did. Him and Jason Kelsey. Both the Kelsey brothers. It's it's insane. Yeah, no, but I mean, but you can't stop stupid from stupiding. I mean, dude, you know, fucking, I just I just cannot believe yeah. that the mayor of Cincinnati would talk all that shit. And dude, I'm not gonna lie, the Bengals they kind of got what they deserved because they were yeah. talking all this shit. Joe Mixon was saying we're the best team in the AFC. They got to come through us. They got to see us. You know, if, if you're gonna do all that talking, then you got to back it up. Yeah, Joe and, Burrow really needs to be the underdog. I mean, I even think, he, he, even Joe Burrow said this week, like, "Oh, you know, I, I never think I'm the underdog," which that's great. But nah, he wants he wants to be the underdog. He does, and that's his fucking whole ass mindset. I mean, dude, like he's I, I've said it before, like he's. He's the closest thing to Tom Brady that I think I've ever seen, just in terms of a play style and a mindset. <laughs> but I, it's, but the fact that the mayor of Cincinnati would just come out and just openly shit on the Kansas City Chiefs, who are already motivated to win an AFC championship game against this team that they have not beaten yet. What the fuck, man? That, that's just a hundred percent a bra, and. The Bengals fans, I mean, you've got to take this L because y'all were talking all this shit, and now they're whining, complaining about the referees, and I get it. You know, there was a hold that probably should have been called on that last play, and... Definitely could have been called. Could have been called. It could have been called. But, dude, the refs, they're, the refs, they're not looking at that. Like, they're looking at Patrick Mahomes because he yeah. starts to get out of the pocket. Yeah, he and, starts to scramble, and their eyes are just automatically going to be be drawn to that golden child but dude i mean the Bengals fans they they've kind of showed their ass after this loss because they were talking all this shit and look man if you're gonna talk all this shit and i had to do this a few weeks ago on this show if you're gonna talk all this shit when it doesn't go your way you gotta fucking own it you gotta eat like, it. i was talking all this shit about the jacksonville jaguars and all sunshine he's about to be put the fuck out by the los angeles chargers and I fucking owned it. You have if you're gonna talk all this shit, you've gotta own it. And yeah. you know, it's it's just it's extra motivation for the best player in the league, for the best team in the league over the last few years. I just don't understand why you would do it. You've gotta play that underdog card because that's where the Bengals thrive. And yeah. they haven't done it and they took an L and I think that all that bulletin board material was a huge reason why. Oh yeah, the Chiefs were motivated to win. Yeah, and the bro, Chiefs did win. Bro, what the fuck are you doing, Aftab for of all? That's just a boy. Yep. All right, man. Well, so the Super Bowl, sorry, the Spooper Bowl, will be the Philadelphia Eagles versus the Kansas City Chiefs. 
but we That's all right. know we're there to watch Rihanna. <laughs> 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 you started on that, bro. I'm so excited for that shit. I am too, you dude. That's, that's, that's going to be a good one, man. I love all the memes where it's like, this is a Super Bowl I'm not going to watch this year. And it's like Facebook profile pictures of angry white guys. <laughs> and like every time I think about Rihanna is the super the halftime performance. That's what I think about. I also think about that with that new NASCAR, uh, the clash at the, uh, the Coliseum, where they're going to mm-hmm. play in the Rose Bowl. Or they're yeah. gonna like have a race in the Rose Bowl, and Wiz Khalifa's gonna perform. I'm like, dude, same thing, same idea, dude. Uh, all right, man. But uh, to all those out there, we will uh, we will hit you back with a Splooper Bowl preview. And uh, until then, it's been a great episode, Preston. We've had a good one here. We got to talk some shit, like we do, and we're gonna pack up and head out now. Uh, please like, subscribe comment do all the things keep checking tell us, us where out we were wrong tell us where we were right yeah man just comment exactly we, we want to hear feedback and we will be doing a live stream for the splooper bowl um guest tbd um i guess we're tba trying get, we're trying to get some bangers guys we're trying, we're trying to, to. we're the thing is gonna we're gonna get some friends together and we're gonna talk some trash and it's gonna be a good time but until then folks uh, Riley Puddin' Peters, Dr. Preston Rowe, we're out of here. Peace.